TaylorMade have actually just dropped a brand new bombshell with these wedges, the MG4. And I honestly think, Josh, these could sabotage the entire wedge market and the likes of Vokey with this tech, it's going to get them worried. Like these are being pitched at that level. And you know what? Also, the price is extremely interesting too. Yeah. And when we say sabotage, it's down to the technology that is within the wedges. It's very, very impressive what TaylorMade have come up with here to try and make these wedges, as Alex said, challenge Vokey. It's never been seen before. It's something that is completely new wedge technology. No brand's done it and neither of us have seen it. And the cost is not what we were expecting. Interesting, isn't it? Like, what's a usual Vokey? Vokeys are around about 150 One, 150, pounds? 160 probably, yeah, pounds, pounds in the UK. Yeah. Um, so what's that dollars? Like 170, 180 dollars? Yeah, at the minute, yeah. I mean, you compare them to like the Kirkland, I think you can get three for 100, right? Yeah, it's a lot of money, isn't it? It's a lot of money on arguably very important clubs in the bag. Well, this is always the debate, isn't yes. it? Yes. People are happy to spend 500 quid on a driver, but actually they're going to use the wedges, the pitch, chip. Yeah. Maybe even put if you snap your put. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's their scoring clubs. Big exactly. Time. So these have just been unveiled today. Like TaylorMade have unveiled the Milled Grind 4. And this has what they're calling a brand new spin tread. This offers golfers spin control, versatility, and they're saying a premium feel, which we think is the likes of what you have in Avoki. Yeah, and it's basically built upon the success of its predecessor. The MG4 represents a significant advancement in the mill grind family, offering golfers a combination of spin control, versatility, and premium feel. So have you ever tried any other wedges apart from um, Cobra ones that you've used? Um, I haven't, to be honest. You had the Rife ones? I did have the Rife wedges, actually, and they were actually very good. Which is interesting, isn't it? Because yes. they're, they're what we'd sort of pitch at the bottom end of the market. Yeah, they are arguably a... a your entry level club, aren't yeah. they? They're, they're what you can go and pick up as a new golfer and have that wedge feeling. To be honest, I got on quite well with them. I, I really did. Because I think people look at a wedge and go, can't come a second. There can't be that much tech in here. Like they can sort of understand a putter. Yeah. They can sort of understand a driver and iron. But I'm only jibbing it from the side of the green. Is there that much tech? Well, so Bill Price, the senior director of TaylorMade product design and creation for putters and wedges. So essentially, it's a, very, game, it's a very bespoke role, that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I thought cool they'd role, have like a, a one guy that oversees all, the whole thing. What, he better be good at short game. <laughs> yeah. His chipping better be good. <laughs> um, so he said this. Today marks a major step forward in the progression of the milled grind family. The MG4, we have developed our approach to wet spin and developed an all new spin tread technology. And this is really interesting. We laser etched with a, with laser etching treatment to create rougher faces, which translates to better friction and moisture channeling for optimal ball control, especially in partial shots. Like I've heard of this before, and just to basically explain what that's saying here is right: when you have a really good premium golf ball, brand new grooves on a tight lie, landing on fast greens, that is your perfect recipe for spin. Add in like a shorter shot when you're not creating as much speed. Add in wet lie. Add in everything like, for example, a little bit of moisture where you're in the fairway, moisture in the rough. These are all things which will really reduce spin. So they're basically saying here, we've created like, I imagine like, like this tread where channels out moisture and increases spin on these shorter shots. But... I've heard it all before, I'm not going to lie. That's the thing. It's the the premise of it, the idea of that technology is brilliant. It's it's like a tyre. It's water displacement, isn't it? So what are you thinking about that, Joshua? So they are, well, well, they're trying to they're trying to get rid of or make it so that the water, any moisture on the face of the club or the face or on the ball, sorry, the surface of the ball or the ground doesn't affect the ball in any way, yeah. the spin in any way, as I said. And, this innovation proves crucial, particularly in wet conditions where players experience higher launches and reduced spin. Okay. And this, the, the, I think the beauty of this is, and the question I would ask is, what does it mean for golfers of all levels? Well, because it's easy for us to look at this technology and to think, 
well, yeah, these guys on tour, and you see him hit a, hit a ball into a green and it spins back 10 feet, but I don't get that. I get it sometimes. I don't get it all the time. These guys seem to get it all the time. And they're playing on golf courses and they're in positions where they can do that. I'm not necessarily always in that position, i.e. not in the fairway. But what does that mean for a beginner or your average golfer? How's that going to help them? Um, I guess. Or how do well, you think? Sorry. Well, like I guess if you if they're saying these spin in more conditions, so if they're saying these wedges are good in wet, in areas basically, they're saying these wedges spin more in situations where they wouldn't spin as much. Right. Okay. So you think another variable to that is actually a lot of golfers' technique. Yeah. So you're using a wedge that let's say, for example, has old grooves and um, then you have a wet face or even they're saying, we're saying potentially here, other brands. I mean, you're less likely to spin it as a new golfer. You don't create yeah. as much, let's not, a good a strike and an ability to spin the golf ball. So if you're using this wedge potentially, the where this could help you is, is the fact that you might actually create spin with this wedge, with this new etching technology, with this new spin uh, okay. tread, with this new way of designing a wedge is what they're saying, I would say. Yeah, so in essence, it's it's to break that down a little bit, it's saying that because of the technology, if you are in those out-of-position scenarios, the technology will help you. It won't necessarily spin the same, but it will help you to create yeah, more or spin. Or if your technique isn't as good, yeah. then maybe potentially help you create more spin. Obviously, it's different to everybody. Yeah, so before we carry on, Get down in the comments. Let us know what wedges you're using currently, whether you've and, and what the lofts are that you're using. Because again, everyone's different. Yeah. We have a very similar split because yeah. they're your golf clubs. Um, very true. <laughs> but it's interesting when you look at people and some people got a 60, 62 in the bag. And I look at that and think, I don't know when I would use that club. I want you a 62 <laughs> anyway. No, if, I mean, if you get a 62, I would honestly drop it. It's really interesting on your technique, right? you will not spin a 62 anywhere near as much as like a 54 because there comes a point, right? Your dynamic loft, so your loft of your club as you come into impact, it gets too great, it just pops up and goes high. So everybody thinks loads of loft, loads of spin, whereas actually I see people spin their 52, their 54 more than their 60. Look at that, eh? News and help with your golf game. So let's go into a little bit more of this tech. So by combining the laser etching treatment and strategically designed grooves and, and the new raw face, very interesting. So a raw face for new golfers is simply that one that will go rusty. Right, okay. More rust, more friction, and it looks like you got it out your granddad's shed. Yeah. But I love that look. I do. And to be honest, I've seen that before and when I was probably less experienced in the golfing world and thought, you've not looked after your clubs. But it's meant to go like that. Yeah, 100%. And what I'd say is, I mean, these wedges look really sleek. Yeah. Like, I love the back design. I mean, again, arguably, they look like any other wedge, but I just like the sleek, minimalistic look, like the line on the top edge. I think it also looks very nice when you put that down against the ball. So, for me, all well-rounded, a good-looking wedge. The one thing I would say on this, you asked me a question about good golfers, maybe the top line, I think this goes with all wedges, by the way, might not look as inviting as the likes of a ping. Yeah. But, but, the spin might negate that and the shorter shot control might negate that. So it goes on further to say here, TaylorMade has achieved a noticeable improvement in their wet spin rates compared to prior models whilst increasing face durability. And that there, in essence, is what we're talking about when you say sabotage, isn't it? Because yeah. no one, they, that that's what people want to achieve and they're the first to do it. Is, well, I essence. think everybody's trying to do that. Like yeah. Titleist have come out before, Cleveland have come out before. Um, a lot of brands, even even Cobra have come out and said, oh yeah, we, we, our, our face, the way we're doing our grooves, it disperses the wet, disperses the wet. But they're saying the way that they've etched the yeah. grooves into this face is going to do this more than ever, which arguably we hear every brand say that about all of the predecessors. But for me, and the reason why the price point almost is like saying that they must have done this, We'll go into this. So furthermore into this technology, the MG4 and the treads channel away the moisture and allow the gold ball to stay on the face longer whilst imparting more spin. And that's what I was saying a minute ago about when you've got a lot of loft and you sort of cut across it, the ball pops off the face. It doesn't ride up the face. Yeah. And moisture, grass, dirty ball, even not a premium golf ball will reduce the likelihood of you creating that spin. Yeah, and what TaylorMade are doing here is they're not just focusing on performance of the technology, but also prioritizing aesthetics and the player feedback. Because we've said that, that before on this channel, it's so important. Golf, yes, is a game of technology, but if that golf club doesn't suit your eye, 
then it's not going to work for you. It's not yeah. going to work for you. It's, I'm I'm big on that with wedges. Yeah. I'm really big. If it, if the, like go back to one of those ping eye wedges with the weird sort of hosel, like that was just not for you. You have to have confidence, and for sure. that comes from looking out the club, knowing that you're going to be able to hit it well. Greg Casario, Taylor May's wedge design team, said the feel component is a significant factor. By replacing the chrome plated face with a raw finish earlier in the mill grind evolution, we were able to influence the spin and also enhance the overall feel of the wedge. Adding to our reconstructed back bar with more weight at position directly behind the strike zone allows us to help players achieve their desired shot trajectories and spin rates with that premium feel and face comfort and, and premium feel and confidence. Taylor made introduced a comprehensive range of sole grinds in the MG4 lineup, offering golfers more versatility whilst also simplifying the selection. And now I'm going to say this right. If it's simple, it's good because honestly, you go on the Titleist website, it is an absolute minefield. Yeah, and I think that is the issue and that's where all this stuff that we've talked about goes away from your average golfer because I look at it as your average golfer and I'm like, what on earth is that? Yeah. Like. I know I need to. I know I need a split, so I'm gonna have a 50, a 54, and a 58. Or do I go F grind? Do I go C grind? Do I, go D I have grind? no idea. Some days a dig, some days yeah. a scoop, some days. And that's where it can become a bit of a minefield. So the easier they're making it, the better. And by the sounds of it, this is not only just aimed at the at the advanced golfer; it's there to to help the the beginner and an average golfer. So let's talk pricing because this is a massive point here. Yeah. So just on those balances, Josh, they're offering LB. SB and HB. So that's low bounce, standard bounce, and high bounce. And what I'd always say is another little tip here in your most lofted ones, go for a higher bounce, but yeah. always take into account where you play most of your golf. Lynx golfers are on harder turf, tend to be tighter. You probably don't want to see too many high bounce clubs there. Now, pricing. Yeah, really interesting this. Now, if we think we said at the start, didn't we? Tight list are around the 160 mark. Well, these are exactly the same. £159, $199. And reading through this tech, it sort of gives me confidence in the sense of if they're charging that, yeah. they must back it. Well, that's the thing. They're coming in there at like a premium wedge. Everyone looks at the Vokey and guys on tour are all using the Vokey. That is your premium wedge. That's your go-to. But this is coming in right next to that. Your other wedges, Callaway wedges are what? On average, around a hundred pound, yeah. roughly, maybe Cobra a little bit more. Cobra around one twenty. Yeah, Cobra around the same. They're all around that sort of lower end, and your Vokey is your standout. This is all of a sudden next to that Vokey, so they must sit. They are seriously backing themselves up that it's going to perform just as well. Exactly. So the lofts come in 46, 48, 50, 52, 54, 56, 58, and 60 being the highest lofted clubs. Now, the wedges also come equipped with the True Temper Dynamic Gold Tour Issue 115 wedge shafts with a Lamkin crossline grip in 360. You got it in the black, the silver, or, or sort of the green uh, round grip. My MG4 allows golfers to personalize their wedge with a variety of finishes, paint fills, and engraving text or logo options. That is so cool. And that's why I also think it's going to break the market. Yeah. Like, being able to personalize your wedges like that. Like, the only be able to do that is like, so like Scottsdale before, yeah. where you go and get bespokely fitted uh, and set up purposely, and they're like, oh, what a bit of guy, and stamp that. I think that is a game changer in the market. I agree. I think people, everything's going down that route. People want to personalize the things. Yeah vice with the golf balls put your own name put your logo on the golf balls that is an extra dynamic to this that i think is brilliant guys thank you so much for watching don't forget to sit down in the comments josh asked you what wedges you're currently using we would love to know you know we're both using cobra here at the minute but this may change in the future josh may di go different wedges maybe we'll get these in the bag if you did enjoy this video please do consider subscribing to the channel and turn the bell so that way you never miss a breaking news story